Do you mind if I become a marker? I was 25 years old and I was single. I was looking for a house to start a family in. And I uh, found this place and as soon as I walked up to it, I knew it was the place for me. I had to have it. It's a large two-story house, uh, six bedrooms, got an acre of land and three, four buildings in the backyard. And the house was here for over 100 years. Uh, it's really unique property. Before I even bought the house, the owner gave me a key to move stuff in. I had a couch here, and I was sleeping in the living room. I got woke up about 2 o'clock in the morning. I heard all the cabinet doors slam and shut in the kitchen. And I got up and went in there thinking someone was in there. It was Ronnie Rose's first night in his new home, and already he was feeling far from comfortable. There's no one there and all the doors were shut. At first I thought it was an intruder that came in, but upon going in, I was only one room away, so there's no way they could have got out in that time. I just pulled the covers over my head after that and fell asleep till morning, but I was really scared, felt something was in there. The next morning, everything was fine, so I kind of tried to push away, like, you know, maybe I was half asleep. Ronnie tried to convince himself it was all nothing, but whatever had caused the strange incident had other ideas. I started hearing like footsteps upstairs when I was alone and at night you'd hear stuff dropping on the floor and sometimes you just get a feeling that someone was there with you even though you were alone. It was becoming ever more difficult to ignore the worrying events. I was in the house a few weeks at this point. It's really boss, man. Deep purple, keeping it I was in a spare bedroom and I was going in the dresser getting some clothes out. And it was the middle of the day, the window was open, it was sunny. The trip. I looked up and I saw a little girl. Probably about five, six years old, wearing a white dress with dark hair. Her back was turned to me, standing in the doorway of the room I was in. I couldn't see her face, but I could just see black hair with a long white dress that almost touched the floor. And she was kind of see-through looking. And then she walked out across the hallway into another bedroom and then just disappeared in the doorway. I started when I saw it and I just kind of thought I was imagining and tried to push that away because I knew I was alone in the house, I didn't have any children, so it was out of place to me. Ronnie's hopes that it was all a figment of his imagination were dashed when his brother moved in with him. My brother stayed here for a few weeks when he was getting his first apartment.
he asked me the next morning, were you in my room last night? And I said, no. He said, you weren't leaning over my bed with your face by me. I said, no, I was upstairs sleeping. He described what the man looked like and what he was wearing. The man's probably about six feet tall, gray hair, wearing a white shirt. When he said he saw that, I did believe him. The man that built our house actually died in that bedroom. Along with the house, Ronnie had inherited an album of old photos from the previous owners. I showed a picture of the man that built the house with his four sons, and he instantly pointed to the man in the center of the photo and said, that was the guy I saw last night. I kind of felt a little relieved that someone else that was at this house experienced something, and it wasn't someone that I knew. I feel that his presence is here because he built his house, he built the business that was here. He's got a lot of memories here. It's pretty typical for somebody who built or designed a house or was very attached to their home to stay in that home in the afterlife after they've died. They feel some sort of ownership of the house still or that they feel a little bit possessive of it. And oftentimes they'll make themselves known and really establish that this is their house still. Although the incidents were unsettling, Ronnie was determined to get on with his life. I had bought the house in hopes of meeting someone, starting a family. I didn't know Candace would be that person. When I first met Ronnie, he did have the house. He lived here for almost a year um, before him and I met. We both had the same ideas on what we wanted in life, family and everything. And after about a month or two, her lease was actually up on her apartment and I told her to move in here. I really loved the house. I loved the age of it. I loved the style of the house and how open it was. And we loved, both of us loved the backyard. We decided to get married eventually and have a family. I never really talked to her about anything that had happened here. Happy to be together, the couple were oblivious to any other activity in their home until Ronnie started chatting with his neighbors. I'm still friendly with the people I bought the house from, and they always told me a story that the old man had buried money somewhere in the house. And there's a little room in the basement that he had built to make wine in, and there's a little bump out in the foundation on the wall, like a shelf that's about two feet wide by six feet. It seemed like a really odd thing to be there, so I broke out the concrete and started digging to see if I could find anything not even knowing if this story is true or not, but just trying to check it out. And uh, my wife, Candace, was with me at the time. And we were down there for about a half hour, breaking the concrete and digging a hole out. All of a sudden, we felt really overbearing presence, like something wanted us out of there. Learning that the man who built his house had hidden some treasure in the property, Ronnie Rose set about investigating a strange section of the wall in the basement. And we were down there for about a half hour, breaking the concrete and digging a hole out. All of a sudden, we felt really overbearing presence, like something wanted us out of there. It's very overwhelming when you're in that area. Uh, you just immediately feel like something is right there with you. They are really trying to tell you you are not supposed to be here. It's just a really unnerving feeling like someone was angry with us and wanted us to be away and stop doing what we were doing in that spot. We decided we better stop doing this and went upstairs. 
Sometimes spirits will stay here on earth because they have unresolved issues, such as feeling um, possessive or needing to guard a certain item. So say if somebody buried cash or money in the basement, that spirit will still feel possessive of that item. They will feel the need to protect it and guard against that so that other people will not discover the item. The rest of the night, no matter where we were in the house, there's always a, a strong presence that was scaring us the rest of the night. Whenever I go near that spot, even if it's, it's nothing to do with digging a hole or anything, I, I start feeling a presence around me, no matter what time of day or night it is. Ronnie and Candace took the hint and never tried to open the wall again. Shortly after the basement incident, Candace gave birth to their first child. Things progressively got stronger after we had Kaylee. At night, putting our daughter to bed in her room, my wife would hear voices, like a woman's voice whispering in her ear when she was sitting in the rocking chair at night. I would fall asleep rocking her, and somebody was always standing behind her door. And when I drifted off to sleep, I would be awoken by a whisper, and I could tell it was a little girl's whisper. And I couldn't make out what she was saying to me, but I could tell that she was trying to talk. Ronnie could not shake the nagging fear that his family might be at risk. After my daughter was a few months old, she would always wake up around the same time in the middle of the night crying. And when you'd walk in a room, you'd get a really strange feeling that someone was in there. It was, it was scary. We decided to get a baby monitor to listen. And we'd hear whispers in there. Candace went back to bed, hoping it was an isolated incident. Until one night. We were in our bedroom. And we'd just be like, did you hear that? And he's like, yeah. I, Ronnie said, yeah, I heard that. Like, you think you're crazy. That was spooky because we had physically hurt it ourselves, but not being removed from it. Like, and you know your kid's in there and you can't take her out of there immediately. And like, there's something in there with her and you don't know, are these things bad? You know, is she gonna be harmed in some way? We got a monitor with a video screen on it. And whenever our daughter would start crying and fussing in the middle of the night, we'd look at it. see orbs flying all around in a room. And then we'd have to go get her because at this point she was really crying. Something was scaring her in there. The couple were almost at their wits end, but then the activity in Kaylee's room stopped and everything went back to normal for a while. When she got older and she could talk, she was always looking at her closet door at night and she always wanted the door to be shut. We asked Kaylee what was bothering her in the room if she was seeing things.
A series of unexplained events had plagued Ronnie Rose and his wife Candace in their new home. Now the activity seemed to be focusing on their daughter, Kaylee. We asked Kaylee what was bothering her in the room if she was seeing things. And she would say that she saw red eyes. And she's scary looking because her face looks messed up on the one side. And she always tries to talk to her and be near her. And she's just scary to look at. So she would cry because she didn't know what to do. She didn't know what it was. Kaylee described her as being young, uh, sort of longish hair, and she would always say that her face was messed up, that there was something wrong with her face, and that's what scared her. We were worried for her daughter. We didn't know if whatever was in there was going to do something to hurt her or she was going to be traumatized from being scared all the time. So we wanted to find some kind of resolution to it. We decided to have someone come investigate and see if they could back up what we were experiencing. Which prompted us to contact a paranormal investigation team. I called uh, John Griffin. He has a, a paranormal research team, and he came out. Ronnie and Candace uh, uh, called me. Uh, their family was, was frightened, specifically more so their daughter. They were really worried about their daughter. We had one of our intuitives volunteer to come and do a walkthrough of the house. He immediately was drawn to the second floor, particularly the daughter's room, and that he saw this little girl with a burnt face. We decided we would do a, uh, a cleansing uh, for their house. It worked for a while. Kaylee told us that the ghost in the room said that after the baby was born, daddy would be here, but mommy won't. Kaylee would come up to Ronnie and she said, daddy, you're going to be OK, but mommy's not going to be. We didn't know what to think when a, a three-year-old is telling us someone that we can't see is telling her these things. We didn't know what to think about it. Ronnie and Candace decided to dig a little deeper into the background of the house. Because of the history of the house, we want to have the property on the historical registry. So we're doing research. We went down uh, to the Historical Society in Schenectady, and we told them where we lived. And the woman instantly said, do you want to find out about the ghost that's there? And we said, we were just trying to find out about the property. How do you know there's a ghost? And for a couple of years before I bought the house, it was vacant and there was sporadic tenants running the place. And a woman that lived there before me had went down there trying to find out if there was any ghost. We had John and his team come back out and they investigated some more. John came with, with the psychic. We found that uh, there was a family um, a mother, a father, and a little girl. The psychic told us that a few blocks from here, there was a fire, probably in the 1920s or 30s. And this little girl had lived at that house. And her father was kind of mean to her, so she liked hanging out at our house with the kids. So she was always over here. And the little girl had actually uh, died in a fire. When she died in the fire, her face was disfigured on one side and her spirit came to this house because all her memories of good things happening were here, so she felt more at home at this house. It's believed that when you're a spirit, you have free choice. So if you think about the places that you've enjoyed visiting in your lifetime, things that you have fond memories of, spirits oftentimes will go back to a location that they have happy memories of because it brings them peace, it brings them joy. And um, you know they like to go there physically, and so oftentimes these spirits will return to a location they have memories of. The psychic described what the man looked like, and it was the same man in the photo I have. Could this be the spirit that was taking over Ronnie's house? In the basement, we just feel really strong presence at night, kind of scary. Uh, no matter how many lights or anything you have on, you don't want to be down there alone at night. John did some EVPs down there. 
He said it was uh, an evil spirit was there. So we ended up having to come back out and bless again. John believed the house had both positive and negative spirits. Far from trying to harm Kaylee, the little ghost girl in the bedroom was trying to protect her from evil. John didn't know who the evil entity was, just that they're trying to suppress the, the good spirits that are in the house. The little ghost girl that's in the house would always try to play with my daughter at night, and that's what was keeping her up. She wasn't there to scare her, but they were around the same age, so the ghost thought this could be a playmate for her. The little girl is a good spirit. She was just scary in appearance because of the way she died. So she still has the disfigured face. And to any little child, that would be scary to see, especially in the middle of the night, waking up, and that's what appears before you. Um, but she is a good spirit. She was, we're told by John, that she was sent here from God to protect Kaylee. We didn't want the good spirits that we feel should be in this house to leave, just the ones that were contributing negative aspects to what's going on. John came with, with the psychic and they said prayers and they were burning sage in the rooms and sprinkling holy water around trying to get the evil spirits to leave. Right now our house is pretty much normal. Once in a while we'll experience a few things at night, but it's not the negative spirits that used to be here. We feel it's just a family in there. They're in their house and they're not gonna leave and we're okay with that because they built this place. They have a lot of memories here and those ghosts don't bother us. So when we do experience it, we, we kind of know who it is. <laughs> 